Okay, my name is Kurt Fendt. I direct the Hyper Studio Digital Humanities at MIT. Uh, and I first want to thank Dan, Peter, and the rest of the Hypothesis team to really make this event happen. This is really amazing to be here and to be able to exchange all these ideas. Uh, so we had also a lot of time on the plane. And like Nick, not, not exactly uh, 10 hours, but we had six hours, and we also started to rethink our presentation. <laughs> so I'm handing it over now to Jamie so that he can talk a little bit why we, we rethought this whole thing. And we're going to go back and forth a bit here, so it should be an interesting experiment and presentation. Uh, my name is Jamie Folsom. I'm lead developer on Annotation Studio and with Hyper Studio on our other projects as well. Uh, and so the, the, the question that I think made us rethink some of our, uh, our, the slides that we had prepared is why? Why are we building yet another annotation tool? Uh, especially with so many um, excellent uh, projects underway and so many folks in the room who are doing cool stuff, um, why create yet another tool? Uh, and so Kurt's gonna talk a bit about our background, um, where we come from, and an answer to why. Because as we've heard in the previous talks, it's really important to think about the different kind of use cases, uh, where we're coming from, so that we can be very specific about the tools that we are building. So just to give you a brief background about, about HyperStudio, it's the MIT's Digital Humanities Lab, and we are situated in the Comparative Media Studies Program, which is part of the School of Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences. So we're not in the Media Lab, but we are very close uh, to them, and we also collaborate quite often on them. As you can see on um, this older slide of, of our webpage, we're engaged in multiple different uh, uh, activities. One is to build projects with faculty internally at MIT, but also with external partners, for example, the US-Iran project, so collaboration also with the National Security Archive with Waterloo uh, University in Canada. It's really looking at the um, exchange between the diplomatic exchange between the US and Iran. We collaborate with Comédie Française in, in Paris on uh, building tools to analyze their daily uh, ticket sale data since 1680. So you see it's a broad range of projects, but we also primarily also work on educational projects. Uh, with faculty, and that's where we do the research and how are the new technologies changing the way we teach, the way we do research in the humanities, and the new questions that are, are, are enabled by these new technologies. So just a few of the goals that are also relevant to talk about Annotation Studio. So our audience is really the faculty and the students in the humanities at MIT, but of course, you know, we build models that are much broader applicable. Uh, so, and their needs and the goals that they have for their own research or for their own uh, teaching, that's really at the forefront of what we do. It's never the technology, it's never the tool. So the tools are really shaped by those needs where we derive them, the use cases. So, and we also see students as novice scholars in, in that space, which means the students need to learn exactly the same kind of skills, they need to use the same kind of tools, they need to have access to that kind of information that uh, scholars have, but we want to enable that process of deep engagement with a text, with content. It doesn't have, only have to be text, media, all different kinds of media. So on the one hand, we want to develop traditional humanistic skills, but on the other hand, we also want to see how are these skills evolving in uh, the new technologies in online environments or in other you know, formats like tablets, which students are quite often using now as the primary way of interacting with these materials. So, and we've heard about these uh, activities uh, in, in previous talks. I think Dan talked about it. Uh, we reference quite often uh, John Unsworth, who's talked about the scholarly primitives, and uh, here are uh, nine of them listed. Uh, actually, six, uh, there's one more. But it also includes, of course, uh, annotation, uh, referencing, illustrating, discovering, and so on. So these are the primary tools and, and skill sets that every humanist is using on a daily basis. So we're trying to integrate those into the tools and how we see and think about the tools in that way. So I'll hand it over to Jamie to... <clears throat> so another pointed question occurred to me as we began to discuss um, how we would talk about Annotation Studio. Despite that, even with this process, even with our focus on this audience uh, and with the, this sort of different set of goals that we have some, from some of the other projects that are out there, <clears throat> We need to be able to answer the question, what is different about Annotation Studio? 
And um, in several ways, the answer to that is that it's simple. Not the answer, but the tool. So, uh, oh, and this is me too, sorry. Um, so I think part of the way that we get to this as a virtue, get to simplicity as a virtue um, in our tool is uh, through this process, our development process, the process in, by which we work with the instructors and students in, at MIT. Uh, all of our projects start with a conversation with an instructor um, and over the course of the, the life of the project is informed by those conversations. We try to quickly build a minimum viable product, deploy it quickly uh, into classrooms typically. Uh, some of our projects are uh, research based but uh, deployment quickly um, is part of it. Um, uh, to assess the success of that tool uh, within the context it's used in and to iterate. Kurt's going to talk a bit about uh, the pedagogy. Just very quickly because we already got the yellow one. <laughs> so, you know, what we're trying to achieve through uh, annotation studio is to really engage students in the process of interpretation. Uh, and of course, that's done through close reading, developing an argument, making connections across text because you know texts have sources, they have, they have adaptations, and looking at this whole ecosystems of how texts have evolved, the fluid process, the fluidity of text is really important to get a sense of what that means. So it's also a shared and a participatory process. It's not you, uh, the lone scholar or the lone student. It's part of a larger conversation that's going on. So it's, but it's also really reflecting on the process. What do students, students do when they annotate, when they read a text? So this also means making that process visible in various forms, and we'll look at, at, at a few examples of that. Uh, so, and that's also connected to what's important for the students as well, is to uh, see their own process to make that process whole, uh, the transparent. So Jamie will actually show you the uh, application quickly. Yeah. So let's see if I can bring this up. Okay. <clears throat> we hope it loads. And I'll say just briefly about this uh, while it loads. Um, this, the tool is uh, open source. It's on GitHub at uh, hyperstudio.github.com. Uh, we encourage you to take a look. We'd love to have you um, try it out. And I'll show you the text that um, actually showed up in one of Nick's slides. And here I'll show you the these are the two repositories we're building on top of the annotator, as Nick said. The, uh, the tool itself is a Rails application for managing groups, documents, and um, uh, groups, documents, and, uh, and students. And there's also an alternative to the, uh, to the data store that is compatible with the Open Knowledge Foundation annotator. Okay. So, let's look at one of these, actually. It may load, it may not. Yeah, so we'll switch back to the slides. Well, it's, it's there, in fact, uh, I'll just point this, it, for anyone who wants to try it out, do try it out at app.annotationstudio.org. I promise it will load eventually. Um, and this is what it looks like. And you can see, as I said, it's a very simple application. You can see the annotator widget there. Um, we've built a sidebar uh, using uh, that calls back to the data store and pulls student annotations uh, back from there. Uh, we've added privacy and grouping uh, functionality that allows students to look at only their own work, to look at group work, or to look at their whole class's work on a given text. Um, apart from that, the, um, the interface for, for the annotation activity is very much what, you, what you'll see if you look at the annotator itself. Um, 
Do you want to talk a bit about some of the future projections? So, you know, sometimes the connection here is a little slow, as <laughs> we've experienced. Just very briefly about the next steps, what we are thinking about. There, there are many ideas, and, and one is already what I mentioned. You know, students have requested very often, we want to use the text and annotate on tablets. Uh, we want to go seamlessly between uh, mobile devices and, and uh, the web and uh, web browsers and so on. But something that has come up very often, you know, mentioned before, sources and adaptations, is to s compare two texts side by side. And this could be a source text, an adaptation, could be uh, an original text, a translation, could be a student text or two different kinds of student text, so it doesn't really matter what kind, but it's important that uh, students are able to annotate across those two texts. So, and, but it's not only uh, annotating across two texts, but it's also annotating a text with a video or vice versa and so on to, to create these <coughs> multimedia uh, connections between them. And I also mentioned the transparency of the reading process, so it's really about uh, making visual where the reader interactions are going on. So we're looking into different kinds of visualizations that on the one hand are filterable through faster browsers and so on, but it's also to make it really clear where interaction is happening and also using those as navigational devices, not just as an analytical devices. So I guess uh, you want to say something about what's the point or, you know, okay. Well, then just the thanks and <laughs> funding. <laughs>